Hello all, myself Chanel. Let us discuss new chapter, Pile Foundation today. In this picture, you can see something like it is something being inserted in the soil. That is none other than pile. The building will be on these piles and it is a pile foundation. Let us begin understanding of the concepts of pile foundation. What are the necessities of pile foundation? Now, the load of the superstructure is heavy and distribution is uneven. Why you need to use pile foundation or insert a pile in a soil? So, first reason is that the load of superstructure is heavy. So, if your superstructure is heavy in load, then you should opt for this. The top soil has poor bearing capacity. So, the top layer of the soil is poor in bearing capacity. Then you should have to, you have to go deeper in the soil to have some strength. Right. For the third point, the subsoil water is high. So, that pumping of water, I mean pumping out of the water is not working or is not economical. Then you should have pile foundations. There is large fluctuation in subsoil water level. If every year the subsoil water level or we can say groundwater table is going high, low, high, low. If it is fluctuating every year, then you should opt pile foundations. Where well, timbering to the trenches is difficult and costly. In the case of timbering the trenches, if it is difficult and costly, you should opt pile foundation. The structure is situated on the seashore or riverbed. You must have seen platforms or you must have seen on the beaches there are some flows constructed, right? Those flows are constructed on pile foundation. So, the structure is situated on the seashore or riverbed. You must opt for pile foundations. If you remember, uh, any building of Mumbai, generally in uh, high rise buildings of Mumbai, uh, they use pile foundation frequently. Canal or deep drainage lines exist near the foundation. If your foundation is going besides the wet section or we can say canal or deep drainage lines, you should opt for pile foundation because the soil nearby there will be softer and it will be having lesser bearing capacity. The topsoil is of expansive nature. So, the topsoil, if it is an expansive nature, you should have the pile foundation so that the building will be safe. And the last point is, piles are used for the foundations of transmission towers, offshore platforms, which are subjected to uplift forces. So, piles are also useful and important against uplift forces so if the uh, down if the downward soil is taking you upwards or taking your structure upwards then it is an uplift pressure or uplift force in this case you should also opt pile foundation moving further to classification of piles so piles are classified in various ways let us begin first way based on method of load transfer so how the pile are transferring the load it will classify the soil classify the piles and bearing pile and friction piles these are basic two types against its load transfer mechanism so let us begin understanding that here you can see an image in this image you can see first item which is end bearing pile and second one is friction pile so, the bottom end of the pile rests on hard strata, then it is an end bearing pile. Here in this image, you can see the bottom end is resting on a hard strata, although the up above portion are a weak soil. In the case of friction pile, when loose soil expands to a greater depth, bottom end of the pile does not reach up to hard strata. So, if there is no hard strata available, in the bottom or very deep in the bottom, then you should go for friction piles. Load is transferred at the tip of the pile. In case of end bearing pile, the name only suggests that end bearing. So, bearing 
is done by end or tip of the pile where in case of friction pile load is transferred to the soil surrounding the pile by friction between soil and the pile material so between the soil and pile material there is friction and these pile works on their friction it is only suitable when hard strata is available so in case of end bearing pile you need you require a hard strata but in case of friction pile you don't need a hard strata you need a loose soil pile act as a column if it is a end bearing pile where in case of friction pile pile will not act as a column end bearing piles are normally driven in vertical direction so here you can see this pile is in a vertical direction but in case of friction piles it is not necessary if they are vertical they may be inclined direction dimensions of the pile are determined from load on pile and its material so dimensions i mean diameter and the length of the pile are determined by total load on the pile as well as the material in the pile where in case of friction pile dimensions are determined from load as well as roughness of the pile surface so here we are talking about friction pile so roughness will play a big role the length of the pile must be equal to the depth of hard strata from ground surface so the length of the pile also must be equal here in case of friction pile the length of the pile must be reduced by increasing the diameter of the pile or by increasing roughness of the surface so yes it is working on a friction so you need to increase the diameter and decrease the length so you can keep the volume similar to that and it will be an economical section so that's it for end bearing pile and friction pile moving further classification of piles by based on their function or use so first pile is compaction pile it is driven and it works as compaction pile as you uh, put it or insert it in the soil the soil nearby that or soil in between those piles will get compacted that is why it is known as compaction piles tension piles tension pile is working in tension only here in this image you can see a transmission tower like design and these piles are working in tension if the pile is getting stressed or stretched from both the sides it is a tension pile anchor pile generally for retaining wall rehabilitation anchor piles are used or you can see and it works as an anchor here you can see a uh, here a retaining wall and this is a anchor pile or tie back anchor it will do what it will support the retaining wall or any structure fender pile fender piles are generally used on river sides or uh, ocean right or, or we get the sea shows here these fender piles you can see that on these fender piles the platforms or bridges are constructed but of small caliber not for a large caliber better pile here better pile can be seen as an inclined pile you can see an inclined pile here this inclined one is a better pile it is generally used as a supporting structure of an anchor pile sheet piles generally caverns and all uh, seashore structures are constructed with the help of sheet piles here these are uh, you can see a pulverized sheet they are inserted in the soil and the water uh, uh, inside that is pumped out that is how it works as a sheet pile classification of piles based on materials and composition now first is concrete pile so based on material and composition means if the pile is made up of concrete then it is called as concrete pile here you can see a square sections or column sections kind of things as a concrete pile but here it look like a column but it goes inside it is driven inside by a crane and this is how it works now it is made of concrete but there are two types in concrete also 
first three casts and second one is cast in C2. So if you are casting the piles at side, on side, there is a cast in C2 pile. But if it is pre-cast, cast at other place and driven at your required location, then it is a concrete pile. Or we can say pre-cast concrete pile. So uh, these are different piles in concrete piles, but you have to choose a perfect driving method or perfect inserting method of pile also. Steel pile. These are made up of steel. That is why it is known as steel pile. They are also driven in the soil by, by a heavy hydraulic jack. Timber pile. Here you can see uh, piles made up of timber and they are inserted. They are generally inserted in uh, timber structures or uh, timber structures in earthquake prone regions generally in case of where earthquakes are very frequent like in case of Japan they are using timber piles composite pile composite pile is very easy and very emerging because they are made up of two materials here you can see two material as concrete and timber so a pile is of timber but it is layered by concrete so it will get strength for concrete as well as timber both and sand pile sand pile are generally made up of sand but they are inserted uh, like a cast in c2 structure not a precast one let us move to next classification which is based on method of installation so method of installation is also important in piles here you can see something is inserting pile right so different methods are there to insert piles according to that these are different piles here first type is driven pile which is driven which is only inserted in the soil second one is driven and cast in c2 pile so they are driven also for an example a hollow steel pipe is driven and then concrete is done so they are driven and cast in C2 both. Bored and cast in C2 piles. Sometimes piles are bored. Like if you uh, are doing ogre boring or boring. That is how pile is driven in the soil. As well as it is a mixture of bored and cast in C2 piles. You have to cast upper section although you are boring that. Screw piles. It will act like a screw in the soil. These are known as screw piles and jagged piles. Jagged piles are what? They are uh, inserted in the soil by pressure. These are jagged piles. So these are due to method of different installation techniques or we can say methods. So that's it in this lecture. We will understand more concepts of pile foundation in next video. Thank you.